Let's look at how to embed metadata inside of Photoshop CC. Many of you may be familiar with the fact that you can embed metadata inside of Adobe Bridge. That's well and good. I like to use Photoshop CC because it allows you to automate the process so I don't have to keep hitting a lot of buttons every time I create a new image. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document. Hit Command or Control N. Save the document as metadata. And I'm just going to put it right on my desktop because this is really just a kind of a dummy file. Okay, now I'll go up to File, File Info. And your metadata screen will pop up. The three tabs that we're concerned with today are Description, IPTC, and IPTC Extension. So let's start with this first page, Document Title. Now, you can fill this out for every single, um, every single image that you've got. However, because we're going to automate this process, we're not going to do that right now. That's something you can come back in and put in whenever you're done with the automation. Okay, author. Go ahead and type your own names in there, please. Author title. This is your job. If you are a student, I would say that you're a web designer. I'm going to put that I'm an instructor at the Harrisburg Area Community College. Come down here to where it says keywords. Those of you that are familiar with SEO, search engine optimization, know that keywords are an important way to give those uh, search engines information about a website. Well, you can also give some extra information in images. I had recently read an article that talked about what happens when you put the keywords inside of, you know, inside of these uh, metadata. And what really happens is that keywords do not affect the placement or ranking that your image will have. What it does do is it allows the browser, or excuse me, it allows the search engine to display extra information about your image. So it doesn't hurt, but it doesn't really help your, your rankings. We're still going to do it. Keywords are going to be web design, You may want photography in there, whatever you choose. Graphics. Um, uh, I think this is going to be good for now. Okay, copyright status. There is an official process that you need to follow in order to be able to, to say that you are officially copyrighted for an image. That information can be found in today's lecture. However, it's beyond the scope of what we're looking at inside of this video tutorial. Copyright notice, I'm going to put down in here, all rights reserved, reserved, and let's put 20 copyright 2013. Okay, if you have, an, if a, if you have a URL, that's great. Let's go to the next page, IPTC. IPTC stands for International Press Telecommunications Council. These guys are the photographic version of the W3C. The W3C has, put to, um, has standardized HTML and CSS. They set forth a certain set of standards that everybody is supposed to go by, and luckily for us, most of the big companies have done that. The IPTC is doing the same thing with images. So what they're really hoping to do is to provide, and I'll, I'll quote this from their website, metadata are critical to the photo business. They are critical by providing important information about the image and by describing it properly. So that's their goal. So let's help them with that goal. This first page, this first tab under IPTC, talks about who created the image. So we definitely need to fill that out. Because this is going to be based on the web, I am not going to include my address, my city, my state, 
postal code, postal code or country, but you can feel free to do that. I'm going to skip down to email. There we go. And I'm also going to skip the website for now. Now, let's take a look at this next tab, IPTC Extension. Whenever you take an image of somebody, I take a photograph, there are a couple of things that you're supposed to write down. The first thing you're supposed to do is you're supposed to, um, to get a model release form signed so that that person gives you permission to use their image. The next thing that you need to do right inside of your image is, is talk about who that person is. And you can put that here. You can put the location where you took your image, the city, the state, the country, all of that. If you happen to be globe trotting, put down the world region. So this just helps you really categorize that information and put it right into the image so that you never lose it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but sometimes things that I file tend to be filed permanently and I can't find them. So this is a great way to take care of that particular problem. All right. Click OK. Your image now has all of that metadata stored. But what happens if you want to add this metadata to one, two, three, four, five, six different images? OK, I'm going to walk you through that process. Create a new file by hitting Command or Control N. We're going to call this metadata underscore multiples. Now with this one, we're going to add a step first before we start doing all the metadata. Go up into your Actions panel and open it. If you cannot see it, go up to Window and choose Actions. Create a new folder. Let's call this Metadata. Create a new action, and we're going to call this metadata, and, and you're also going to put JPEG after this. There's a reason for this. Any action that you use on a particular file type cannot be transferred to other file types. So if you need to do it on a ping, you'll need to save these actions again. Just a heads up. So for now, for us, we're going to do it on a JPEG. Hit record. Let's go back and insert our information. Go up to File, File Info. Okay, I'm not going to do a whole lot of this. We're just going to be really looking at the description, particularly the author, Rosemary Barker, author title, instructor. And the nice thing is they've got it saved for you. Copyright notice, all rights reserved. I can remember how to spell reserved. Yep. And copyright 2013. Go to the IPTC extension, excuse me, IPTC tab. Input your address, city, state, postal code, all of this information, and click OK. Stop recording the action. Save your file. Okay, now that that's set up, all you have to do is go to the next file, click on the action, and tell it to play. Let's look at it. Ah, beautiful. It's stored right there for you. Now guys, let's be honest. You've, had, you've got maybe six images here that you're working with. And it's not going to cost you a lot of time to input all this information for just six images. Where this really saves your bacon is where you have to batch process, meaning do a whole bunch of photos at once, where you have to batch process 20 photos. 50 photos, 100 photos. This can really save you some time. So remember how to set up that action. 
All right. Now I have one final thing to show you to make the automation process even easier than that. Okay. Hold on. Here we go. Go, go up to File. Scripts and you want the Scripts Events Manager. Okay. Go down to Photoshop Event. Whenever you save the document, you want to add 